Well, hello there, KK fam. Welcome once more to Quantrell's Kitchen. And if this is your first time stopping by, I'd like to say a very warm welcome to you. So my mom challenged me to make my own homemade corn dough, and it turned out so perfect. And I'm sharing that with you. Come along and see how we did it. So first of all, we are going to pour our corn. This is white corn uh, into our bowl. I got this from the African market. So do look at your local African market. You might find that there. And I have some also here in this jar. That wasn't enough. So we are going to add some as well. And then we are just going to go ahead, wash this and soak it. So what mama is doing right now is looking for any undesirable particles that could be gravel or grains that are just rotten and it needs to be brought out. And once she's satisfied, we're going to go ahead and wash. Once you are satisfied that your corn is thoroughly washed, you're going to then just fill the bowl with some more water and set it aside for three days for your corn to soak. It's been day three. This is three days later. This is how our corn looks. The bubbles on the surface is a little bit slippery or slimy. We are going to wash this now. So you want to make sure that your corn is very well washed. Mm -hmm. Yes, so the water has a little bit of a pungent smell. You want to make sure that your corn is thoroughly clean so you get rid of that smell. Yes, so the corn is thoroughly clean so you get rid of that smell. So now we are going to strain this through a strainer. So it is very necessary for you to do this, especially when you are taking your corn to the corn mill, I mean the commercial corn mill, because there you are going to end up getting powder as your end result and then you come home mix everything with water to get your dough but we found that we didn't really need to get our corn thoroughly dry for the blender because the blender could actually not do its job without some water so i'm using the dry meal blender for my um, vitamix and i thought i was going to be able to just blend without water but remember our corn is not very dry at this moment it has some moisture on it so that made it difficult for me to blend without adding some water So we are pretty much doing this with you and since this is our first time even though this is a dry grain blender 
because it is the grains in here are moist it's hard for me to blend so i'm adding a little bit of water remember once you're done making your flour your corn flour anyway you're going to add water to have a dough so i've added about half a cup of water and i'm going to start blending again Our dough is perfect, unbelievable. I say, come on, come on, come on. Just look at the texture. Just look at the texture. We're just going to transfer this into our container and continue blending. <laughs> yeah, the only difference is, of course, you came out, we came out with our dough right away and it's hot but otherwise yeah now I'm for it oh I said you can go up with my hand and she will otherwise yeah now I'm for it now you get to know where I get my sense of humor you know, from normally when you go to the mill unless you have never been to the corn mill you won't know this but when they are done making it your dough is pretty hot it's hot but it's hot say powder is powder no more issue so yeah, they are already prep one, you know. There's no point. There's no point now going to mix it with uh, water. So this is the only difference. We don't have an actual corn meal, so this is perfect though. So we're just going to add more corn to this and blend. cycle is not enough I do it two cycles to make sure it's perfect perfection once more so you might be wondering why all this work. All this work because in our part of the world, it's very hard to find real corn meal like the ones we get in Ghana. Normally it is just corn flour or corn powder that you can get and they make you do yourself. And I did this. My mom was not pleased with this. We come from a family of cooks. My auntie sells baku all the time. It's never been difficult for us to find corn meal. We could go to her if we fail to make some at home ourselves or we ran out of homemade cornmeal, we could just go to my mother's sister and have cornmeal. So it just did not cut it for mama to have the kind of cornmeal that I had living here for so long. It was perfect for me. I thought it was absolutely perfect. But of course, when you just come from Ghana, you taste the difference. I have lived here quite long enough that, you know, you just forget sometimes how certain things taste. But once this was made, I could really tell the difference. So, we don't want the dough to rise and spill out of the container we first used. So this very last one, we are going to put it in another container just to be safe. Give it enough room to rise. So Mama is saying you need to press your dough once it is in the container to eliminate all air pockets. You don't want to have air pockets in it. In front of my bed. In front of my bed. She's saying people say it becomes the sharpness in your dough sometimes comes from that. 
which probably you don't mind, but most of us don't like to have our dough sharp or have a bite to it. Our one as well. Same press on it. Air space in here. Our dough is perfect at this time. We're just going to cover it. So I was just asking my mom about what I know. My auntie's who sell banco would normally do, they would put some um, pepper on the top. That is also to prevent it from being sharp. But we don't want to do that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This is just a little bit. Yeah, yeah, sankeka. Ana mama me bo, me sanka. Sometimes we say the sharpness comes from the person who made the dough's hand. Uh, growing up, I used to be the one to mix the dough when I was of age. My dough was always good, so I don't need to do that. But if you're making a lot, especially for commercial purposes, you might want to put that pepper on it. So we are going to cover this and let it sit overnight. So pretty much next day you can use this to make your banku, your cocoa, especially your cocoa. That is your porridge. You want to, yeah, you want to use it the next day or two days max. That's what we normally do. Then then we you, we would put it in the in the fridge. But of course, people who sell it would let it sit until it's finished. But we are going to keep this just overnight, and we are going to refrigerate it. Okay, so the next day, this is how our cornmeal looks like. It's risen all the way to the top. I don't know. Okay, the lid came off clean. Just look at that. So that is the more reason why you don't want to fill your container all the way to the top. This almost came spilling all over. So it was good that we left this much in this little container. Otherwise, it would really have spilled over so we have this and we have that all right so now we are going to check for texture so mama is showing you how it looks like you see perfect texture see that this is just like you would have bought it from the market and now let's look at the one we put in the smaller container perfect perfection it would have spilled over definitely if we added it all in the other container so when i see mama is the queen of props you have to believe she is the queen of props she always understands the assignment so she's going to shape this for you just so we feel like we are on the market and it's okay to have a few grill in here. The blender probably, you know, those on the corners. I just saw my mom pick one and throw into the skin. That is normal. Even when you buy from, even when you buy from the market, the one that they sent to the commercial mill, you still find little grains of corn that miss the grinding process. And if you happen to find that, you just fish it out. But we are not going to strain our corn meal. This is homemade. We know it is perfect so we are going to eat every aspect of this well mama did all this just so you could see how cornmeal is made and sold back home shaped in those basins in the market with plastic around it so kindly give us a thumbs up for all that effort we're done we've taken some aside to make some porridge for breakfast and our banku later in the day it was a cornmeal overload well if you make homemade cornmeal you really want to eat everything you possibly could make from that they are on a card of kono but we will make kinky very soon now that mama is here one day we'll make kinky as well so we are portioning out the rest this is cornmeal for banku so these big ones are for banku and mama says it's easier for you to just uh, melt or dissolve it in water if it's not pressed together because it has a lot of air pockets in it but i actually had to press on it a little bit because my freezer is pretty full we don't have that much room so we're trying to make sure that everything fits in there the one in these smaller bags are going to be used to make porridge later on whenever we feel like it and trust me you are really really going to taste the difference when you make your own homemade cornmeal thanks so much for watching don't forget to give us a thumbs up and until i come your way next time with something delicious peace
Be loving, be kind, be happy.